Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Smash Ultimate Modding Workshop. This first episode is mostly rephrasing this guide, which will be available in item 1 of the description. Big thanks to Jam1 Garner, Pine, and WooBoy for that. This series of tutorials assumes you already have a modded Switch, a Windows computer, although others might work, and the Smash Line and NRO hooks. Those will be item 2 in the description. Also, feel free to ask any questions you might have in the Code Edits channel of the Smash Ultimate modding Discord, which is naturally item 3 in the description. What this episode will be teaching is how to set up a development environment for function hooking. Function hooking is essentially overriding a section of the game's original code. The first step to being able to do that is installing Rust and Git, which are in item 4 of the description. I'm going to go download Rust, and download Git. Then in File Explorer, I'm going to open rustupinit.exe. Now, I already have it installed, but the process should go something like this. It'll prompt you to install Visual Studio C++ build tools, if you don't already have them. This menu will pop up. Type 1 and hit Enter. Once that's done, there'll be some more options. Just hit 1 again. Of course, I already have Git, so you'll kind of just have to listen to the steps. Open the installer, pick your preferred IDE. I personally prefer Notepad++, but this guide uses Visual Studio Code, which should work fine too. As you keep hitting next in the installer, make sure the following options are selected. Git from the command line and also third-party software. Bundled OpenSSH. OpenSSL library. Check out Windows style. Windows default console window. Default. This one if you want. You can just hit next. And we do not want either of these. Then you can hit install. Next, we'll be opening a window in command prompt to check that our installations work properly. To do this, open File Explorer and type in this line, CMD, and hit enter. It'll open a command prompt window in the same folder that you ran the command in. All that you really need to know about command prompt for this is that you can type DIR, short for directory, to list all of the folders in your current folder. You can type CD and the name of a folder to move into it. And if you see down here, I'm now in my programs folder. And you can hit CD space dot dot to exit the folder. Type cargo into CMD. And you should get a help message like this one. Do the same with git. And you should see a similar message. If you don't, I won't really be touching on troubleshooting in this guide. Please just use Google. Now, run cargo install cargo dash skyline. You might have to wait a while. To make sure that it installed properly, run cargo skyline dash dash help. And you should see this help menu. Now, pick the place you'd like to put the mod. I personally have a folder called workshop and I'm going to be putting the mod in there. Now, run either of these two commands, which are going to be items 5 and 6 in the description. 5 will generate a plugin with a few code examples, which I would recommend you do. If you just want a blank plugin, however, 6 will generate that. Here, I have 5. Once it's done generating, you can enter it with a CD command like this. I then type cargo skyline build to build the plugin. If you chose number 5, you'll have a plugin that has some minor changes on Mario. And if you chose 6, it'll do absolutely nothing. Now that it's built, I'm going to show you where you get your plugin. You'll see this is my workshop folder. This is the mod that I created. You're going to be looking in Target, ARC64 Skyline Switch, Debug, and at the bottom you'll see three files named lib smash line test. You're going to be looking for the one that ends in NRO. And this is your plugin. One last thing before we actually edit it, you need an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. There's tons out there, and I prefer Notepad++, which I'll be using throughout this series. It's a little less helpful than other IDEs, and is essentially just a notepad with a few extra features. If you want something a little more high-tech, I would go for Visual Studio Code, which the written version of this guide goes over. All IDEs should be pretty simple to download, 
and once you have one up and running, you can open the plugin files in them. For example, here I am in Notepad++. If I go to Open, Workshop, Skyline, Source, here is everything that the plugin created, and here's the script that I can edit now. But there's one last thing that I should be mentioning in this episode, and that is how you should go about naming files, folders, and scripts, as it's very crucial so that nothing gets messed up. This SRC for source folder is where all your scripts should reside. In SRC, there's lib.rs. Think of this as the table of contents of the mod. Do not change the name of this. At the top, it has some important declarations that let Skyline know how to actually build the plugin. If we're sticking with the book analogy, this middle section are the stories that your book of a mod contains. And this bottom section tells Skyline which ones to actually read. Make sure you don't edit the structure. You need it to say mod, name of a folder, and down here it needs to have the same name, colon colon, install, double parenthesis. If you add one, it needs to follow the same structure. And be in both this and this section. Now, let's say I wanted to add a Luigi folder. I would need to go mod Luigi, then Luigi, colon, colon, install, just like that. But there's not actually a mod there to be installed. So what I need to do is take, say, the Mario folder, copy it, paste it back, rename it Luigi. I don't actually want to do this right now, so I'm just going to remove that. And I'm going to save. Now, if you see the SRC folder again, there is custom Falco and Mario. Note that these are, of course, the same ones that you, you see there. In every single one of these folders, there's a file just called mod.rs. These hold the words of each story. Now, you can actually name these folders whatever you want, as long as the name stays the same. Even though this holds all of Mario's scripts, I can rename it to I Love Ice Cube. And as long as I rename Mario to I Love Ice Cube, it'll work perfectly fine for Mario. Just note that I would recommend not changing the name of this file. Now, if you actually go into one of these mod files, I'm going to choose Mario. It's also split into sections like lib was. The top section here is the imports. It essentially tells the compiler where the functions you're using are from. Occasionally, you may need to add something to this section, but I touch on that more in episode 7, which is about troubleshooting. Now, this large middle section contains all of the scripts. There are some important aspects that I'll go over quickly. This first line has some parameters, agent, script, and category. Agent is of course the fighter whose script you're replacing, in this case Mario. Script is the actual script that's being replaced. This one is his back throw. I'll go over how to get scripts and what to put in the script category in a later episode. Category you usually shouldn't touch. There's four types, effect, expression, game, and sound. I'll go over them all in a future episode as well. Now, just keep this as game. This right here is the name of the function. I would recommend you name it character underscore script to keep it consistent, but it can technically be whatever you want it to be, as long as it's reflected down here in the bottom section. This is very similar to the bottom section of lib.rs. It tells the compiler which functions to, well, compile. Always make sure that every single one of your functions is listed down here, with a comma after them. That's all that I'll be covering in this episode. Episode 2 is a shorter one, going into detail what these scripts are comprised of. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if this helped, and happy modding.